Welcome back to the shop. So I painted this up. Now I need to remove some of the paint on the edges here and then also remove some of the paint from here. I think the best way to go about doing the paint from here is with the wire wheel. Um, be gentle with it and try not to get in to these surfaces. And then on, on this edge here I think I'm going to try to just sand it out and see, see how that works. So. This sits up a little proud of the outside, so that's not going to work. I'll try a roll lock disc. Good. Alright, now this is going to be a little bit more delicate. I'm going to take it over to the wire wheel. That's never a good video, so I'm going to just bring you back and let you know how that worked out. Alright, I may have messed up there. Either my camera's acting up or I didn't hit the record button. Anyway, what I was, what I was carrying on about was the the fact that that there's been this discussion as to how much to get into restoring tools. When do you when do you remove the patina and when do you take a tool down to bare metal and when do you take it completely apart? When do you just partially dis disassemble that? When do you just leave it alone just for the sake of leaving it alone? And and you know I think that of course obviously personal preference comes into that largely. But, but I'm excited that the conversation is even being had. That, that people are actually concerned about how we treat and handle these things. Because it's sort of not necessarily a dichotomous relationship. It's not a matter of, of right or wrong or, or left or right or up or down or anything like that. It's just a matter of how you perceive the tools. Are they, are they something to be used every day to, towards some other end? Do I... Do I put this on a shelf or do I put it in a work toolbox and, and continue to use it? Do I uh, treat it as a, an artifact, a historical piece of time when, when things were made by, by great Americans who had tremendous pieces of machinery that were, you know, a product of the war? Um, you know, there was, there was a time in this country when we made really, really cool stuff. And, you know, we're making some cool stuff now, too, don't get me wrong, but, but you know, the value engineering has wrecked a lot of things. We get a lot of pieces of shit. And, and you know, that's... I don't have to go too far for some evidence to see the difference between a flathead screwdriver nowadays and a flathead screwdriver long ago. I mean, it's all about making money, and you're not making money when you, when you have brass, when you have hardwood, when you have thought, effort, time, weight, all these other things put in to this as opposed to having some some machine stamp these things out at 10,000 parts per minute um, and then label it with a name that that once had some respect again not not I'm not here to bash anybody or anything like that but Craftsman used to make some really good stuff and and Sears I don't even know if Sears exists anymore um, I got a Sears garden tractor you know it's it's awesome it's an old 60s garden tractor. It's just a wonderful, well-built machine. I wouldn't dare buy a Craftsman mower now. I, I mean, I shouldn't say that. You know, there's there's a certain market for those, and they, they fit really well in that market, but but compared to what they used to make, the, I think that the, the, they've gone backwards in some in some cases. But, but anyway, with this tool, it's, it's not about it's not about the practicality. The reason I'm doing this is not necessarily for the history. Who else is going to see this thing? I do it, one, because it's therapeutic for me. I like doing this. This is fun. And, and two, you know what, maybe maybe I'll find some. Now that I have a tool, maybe now that I have this, um, I'll find some application for it and put it back to work. And maybe it might become more valuable to me uh, because I took the time to clean it up, understand how it works, 
and, and appreciate it for the tool that it is and the amount of craftsmanship that went into it. So Anyway, I'm going to get back to the center. So one part that I didn't clean up, and I didn't put it in the sandblaster because it's so small and if it falls into the sandblaster it's a real pain, but um, the nut needs to be cleaned up and it's, it's a little hard to grab onto with the wrench because it's so narrow, but I'm going to actually put, insert it, install it onto the tool and then take the whole tool over to hold this and, and hit it with the... I had mentioned possibly making this a little tighter fit, trying to work towards uh, collapsing that a little bit. I'm going to leave it alone because it doesn't really impede my ability to use the tool or the effectiveness of it or anything like that. And I fear that if I were to put this on the, the vise and start smashing on this, that there's as much chance of me flaring this out and snapping it off as a probably a better chance of that than there is of me uh, compressing that anymore to any to any real end. If it was brass, I might feel differently, but that appears to be some sort of steel, and, uh, and I'm just not real comfortable pounding on that, so I'm just going to put it together the way it is. Alright, this might be an opportunity to see something you don't normally see. Inside of... God, that's horrible light. Flash, flashlight might be a little overkill, but... Let's see, let's see if it helps. Now, if you can see down in there, you have the three jaws and some springs. Really hard to see in there. And on the back side, oh god, I don't think you'll be able to see that. Anyway, there's a a simple push mechanism that as I push it up, it's got a, a disc focus. It's got a little mechanism on the back here, a little protrusion that as you screw it down further onto the to the drill, it pushes the jaws up. And uh it looks like I could probably stand the, I, the sandblasting has got a little bit of chowder in there. So. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. The camera went crazy and decided not to uh, focus. So there it is, there's the Goodall and Pratt hand drill. A fun little build, I'm not complete, completely done with it yet, um, depending on how I assemble the video we'll see if I throw in some other content, but uh, anyway, what I'm missing here, actually you know what, I'll just do it over, what I'm, what I'm missing here is, is the, the handle that goes on this side, and I have a piece of oak here. And my thinking is, is that, that I'll be able to drill and tap a piece of wood, then use a two-part epoxy to, to fasten this, this uh, threaded insert into the wood. And then I'll take a quarter 20 bolt like this and thread it into here, cut the top of it off, put it in the drill press, and use that as sort of a vertical lathe to trim this down to make a wooden handle for here. Uh, it will be missing the brass because you know I just don't have any means of fabricating that, but it would be a legitimate handle that fits on this quarter twenty here. 
The reason I can't demonstrate it for you is because this thread is crushed a little bit. And what I will need to do is take the thread file on the 20 setting, on the 20 side, and come through and clean this up. And I think that might make some good content for another video. But effectively that finishes this, this little build here. So I guess the last thing I could do is find a piece of the end wood that I'm going to probably shave away anyway and drill a hole. There we go. It works. Well, it sure makes you appreciate cordless tools. Anyway, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, the next video is probably going to be either the handle for this or I think it might be time to perhaps come through and maybe clean this one up. The, the, the initial wrench that I had done, which is one of my more popular videos, and uh, see if I can find it. And, and people hated it. It got a lot of views, but people, I, mean, I was goofing around with the software trying to figure out and threw some stupid music in there. And anyway, it was, it was not my finest work. So anyway, this was a popular video, but you know, a piece of, piece of crap. Um, this was Ford brand wrench, but anyway, it just didn't come out very well. And I think, I think I've learned quite a bit from uh, some of the other channels and, and um, primarily the, the Scout Crafter channel has been, been very informative. Uh, I took a page out of his book and ordered some shellac. That should be here soon. So I think I could get started on cleaning this up and this will be my first, uh, well, but we'll see how things go. It could potentially be my first shellac job, um, depending on when it arrives. Again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Subscribe if you haven't.